A portion of this video is sponsored by Surfshark. Despite tablets, phones, and phones that turn into tablets, e-readers are still a big deal for those who seek escape or education in the world of books. But this video isn't about a new e-reader, it's about the 2020 technology behind it. Technology that suddenly makes every Kindle, Kobo, and Nook of the world seem as antiquated to my eye as the old black and white newspapers they now resemble. I'm Mr. Mobile, and I've just spent a week with one of the world's first color e-readers. Join me for a closer look. Okay, there are actually several color e-readers out there, but this particular one is the Pocketbook Color, released by Switzerland-based Pocketbook International in June 2020. It's a fairly by-the-numbers e-reader. You've got a 6-inch touchscreen anchored by a handful of physical buttons with Wi-Fi for syncing, Bluetooth for audiobooks, and 16 gigs of storage, which can be augmented with a micro SD card. I appreciate that because as a product that's not marketed in the US, the Pocketbook's onboard marketplace isn't exactly teeming with the titles I can easily find in Amazon's Kindle store. While there is a Dropbox-based wireless transfer option that works well for loading your own PDFs and eBooks, transferring files via microSD is much faster. So again, I appreciate it. What I don't really appreciate is that other micro, that one that should have been left back in 2016. Yeah, I'm talking about the micro USB port. As with most e-readers, the Pocketbook Color's battery should last a while between charges. It took me a week to even hit 50%, but to have to dig out a special cable when you do need to charge is a letdown, for sure. Okay, the basics are covered, so let's get to why we're here. This six-inch display is powered by a brand of electronic paper called E-Ink. That's capital E, capital I, a corporation headquartered in Massachusetts, which I actually visited back in my pocket nowadays to learn about the technology behind these displays. Technology that really hasn't changed all that much since. Here's how it works. In an e-ink display, black and white pigments are suspended in tiny spheres. And let me emphasize tiny. Each is about the diameter of a human hair. The pigments inside carry an electrical charge, and the capsules are sandwiched between two electrodes. So if you want to change the color of a pixel, it's as simple as giving it a positive or a negative charge, which brings either the black or the white pigment to the top. Now, I'm simplifying a little bit here, but do that across several million capsules on a six-inch diagonal sheet, and bam, you've got an e-paper display. And here's what's cool about it. Unlike a conventional LCD or OLED, e-ink doesn't need any power to keep an image on the screen. The only time it uses energy is to change state. That's why e-readers can last as long as they do on fairly small batteries, and it's why they're so easy to read in bright sunlight. See, on a laptop or tablet, you need a powerful backlight or very bright OLED elements to overcome the sunlight. And e-paper relies upon that very light because physically it behaves more like, well, paper. Now, to add color to the mix, e-ink has tried several approaches in the past. But the one we're looking at here is the newest, called e-ink Kaleido. And don't worry, the foundation is exactly the same with the black and white pigments inside capsules. The new element is the color filter that's added on top of that foundation. It's a thinner and lighter color filter than previous attempts, which means devices like the Pocketbook Color stay just as portable as previous e-readers, while now being able to display up to 4,096 different colors. So book covers, textbook graphics, magazines, and yes, comic books can finally come to life as they do on a tablet while preserving the battery life and readability advantages of a proper e-reader. This is a monumental accomplishment, and there's a lot of excitement for this technology, from bookworms to futurists eager to see it proliferate in other categories. But after the break, I'll share a few observations from my week with the pocketbook color that give me pause. I'm not traveling as much as I have in years past, but I'm still using today's sponsor just as often. While Surfshark VPN is great for safely browsing on a public hotspot, it's also a powerful tool for preserving your privacy at home. Look, I make my living thanks to the advertising that goes alongside my content, but some ads come with an uninvited guest, malicious software. Surfshark helps fight that malware, and it also hides your IP address, which makes it tougher for bad actors to target you. 
If you think your internet service provider might be throttling your speeds based on usage, Surfshark can help level the playing field. And it works on your computer, tablet, and your phone. Try Surfshark now at the link below and use promo code Mr. Mobile. You'll get 83% off a year's subscription and three extra months free. Thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. As fun as exciting as it's been to experience the pocketbook color, I gotta admit, I'm not gonna be too sad to send it back to e-ink. Part of that is just a byproduct of personal preference. The past year I've spent diving headlong into foldable phones has made me very comfortable with reading books on an OLED screen. I know a lot of people complain of eye strain in that situation, but I tend to read at bare minimum brightness with white on black text, and it's been just as comfortable for me as reading on my Kindle Oasis. Now, maybe I'm doing some long-term damage and I'll come to regret that, but the other thing is, you know, the color just isn't that great. Putting it alongside the Galaxy Fold 2 and iPad Pro, you can see exactly what The Verge's Sam Byford means when he writes that e-ink Kaleido kind of looks like a newspaper that's faded after a few days. What's more, the resolution drops to 100 ppi when you switch to color content on the pocketbook, and even if you're just viewing text at what should be a full 300 ppi, the color filter above the capsule layer creates a subtle screen door effect that makes for a fuzzier image than you'd get from a monochrome e-ink display. And finally, the other stuff that color could make more compelling, like the handful of apps and games the pocketbook ships with, or the web browser? Well, the advantages of color are mostly nullified by the disadvantages of e-paper, like a very low refresh rate that makes scrolling frustrating, annoying image persistence or ghosting, and the need for e-readers that leverage it to use a built-in front light in the dark, which affects the color depending on how bright you need to make it. Now, let me be clear, I still respect the engineering achievement here. I continue to appreciate the benefits of dedicated e-readers, and I will be one of the first to pre-order the color Kindle whenever that might come out. E-ink embracing color is good news, no matter how you slice it. But until the quality of that color and the responsiveness of the interface improves, I think most folks will continue to prefer their phone or tablet when they need to consume colorful content. This video was produced following six days with a pocketbook color review device on loan from e-ink. Mr. Mobile does not accept compensation from manufacturers in exchange for coverage, though. Neither Pocketbook nor e-ink was offered copy approval or editorial input into this video. They're seeing it for the first time right alongside you. Please subscribe to The Mr. Mobile on YouTube if you'd like to help me make more content like this. Until next time, thanks for watching, and if you can't stay home, then at least stay safe and mask up while you stay mobile, my friends.